Okay, welcome everybody to Joseph Carlson After Hours. In this episode, we're gonna be going over a company called CrowdStrike. CrowdStrike is a cloud security company and it's became a little bit popular over the past couple months, but this is one that I think will continue to grow rapidly over time. I actually see this company becoming maybe double its market cap over the next two years with the way that things are, are working out with it. So CrowdStrike is a cloud security company. The main goal of it is just to stop breaches. The type of thing we're seeing with solar winds and those type of companies where Russia or domestic hackers come in and they breach a company, they install some type of uh, software malware on it and they steal all of your data and the market cap of the company gets destroyed and it causes all these problems. CrowdStrike is the go-to company to stop those type of events from happening. I also have CrowdStrike in my story fund. If you're not familiar with the story fund, this is my secondary growth standard portfolio. So I started this for Patreon. So if you want to see more frequent updates on this account, you can join the Patreon. You can check that out. Um, but CrowdStrike is one of my biggest bets in this portfolio. I have it at 5%. And currently I have more money in it than basically any other company in my portfolio other than an ETF. So CrowdStrike is one that I believe strongly on. And I'm going to go through in this video why I believe strongly in the future of this company. Now, first of all, before we go into the revenue growth and the numbers and, and all that type of stuff, let's look at the CEO describe the purpose for CrowdStrike, why he created the company. His name is George Kurtz. He's the current CEO. So it's founder led, the same guy that started it is leading the company currently. And he is very driven to make this company a large company. So let's go ahead and let him explain why he created CrowdStrike. This is one of the largest data breaches in history. And another massive data breach. A massive data breach. New reporting in the massive cyber attack. Two major cyber attacks. This is just the latest example of North Korea's increasingly hostile cyber attacks. More than 300,000 in 150 countries. 70 million. 500 million. 500 million people around the world. Auto plants, offices, railroads. The most devastating, hospitals in Great Britain where ambulances were turned away. Cancer treatments and surgeries canceled. It's I forgot to mention this video, this presentation is also a few years old. So it doesn't include the most recent breaches and hacks, which you can extend this montage quite a bit if you included just the recent ones with solar winds. It's just too easy to create malware that's not detected by the current generation of antivirus products. And this is the reason why we're seeing a lot of these attacks. Primarily, they're focused on stealing our intellectual property, trade secrets. Every industry, engineering documents, manufacturing uh, processes, chip designs, telecommunications, pharmaceutical, you name it, it's been stolen. Nearly every breach you've ever heard of had two things in common. The victims had a firewall and an antivirus solution. Today's cyber adversaries run circles around those fossilized technologies using highly sophisticated tools and techniques. And we have a security industry that is seriously outgunned and losing ground every day. We need a new way forward to confront today's threats and to challenge a complacent industry that considers failure an acceptable risk. At CrowdStrike, we've found that way forward. We like to say we don't have a mission statement. We're on a mission to stop breaches. Hi, I'm George Kurtz, co-founder and CEO of CrowdStrike. So that's their mission. That's the whole thing is to stop breaches. A lot of companies have these, you know, these big grandiose mission statements. All CrowdStrike exists for is to stop breaches. So that's the whole purpose of the company. He goes on explaining First of all, what is wrong with the current solutions that a lot of companies are using? CrowdStrike is a cloud company. So everything they do is through a cloud model. And he explains the difference between that and what current companies are using with on-premise. I've been in the security industry for over 26 years and was a senior executive for one of the world's largest antivirus companies. That's where I met my co-founder, Dmitry Alperovich, who was running threat research. Together, we heard firsthand from companies how angry and upset they were with their security solutions, how difficult they were to deploy, and how ineffective they were at stopping breaches. Almost every company and government agency today faces the constant threat of cyber attacks from a variety of threat actors. These attacks aim to not only steal money and intellectual property, but increasingly they seek to disrupt and destroy the cost of these cyber crimes is thought to be in the hundreds of billions of dollars annually. As Dimitri and I looked around at the cybersecurity industry, 
We saw that it was mired in decades-old on-premise client-server architectures and mostly relied on signature-based technologies that are only effective against previously known attacks. They were built around the obsolete notion of securing corporate networks using firewall appliances and myopically focused on just stopping known malware. These solutions simply could not operate with the scale, speed, and versatility needed to stop breaches and protect endpoints in today's challenging and dynamic threat landscape. So he uses a lot of buzzwords there, but basically right now, a lot of companies use on-premise security, meaning that they have software installed on their servers and it's all done at like, uh, you know, switch endpoints and servers and client side. And this is where a new architecture comes in with cloud security. We decided we couldn't solve this problem working at a legacy antivirus vendor. We needed to start from scratch. And so we founded CrowdStrike. We set out to create a modern endpoint security platform, one with a cloud native architecture built from the ground up to stop breaches. Over the past 15 years, we've witnessed the transformative and disruptive power of cloud platforms. We were inspired by successes like Salesforce with the CRM cloud, ServiceNow with its service management cloud, and Workday with its HR cloud. These three pioneering companies reinvented their respective industries by creating cloud native offerings that completely eclipsed their fossilized client server competitors. At CrowdStrike, we believe we are the fourth pillar of this cloud revolution. Do you see how ambitious he is here? He's positioning CrowdStrike right there with Salesforce, ServiceNow, and Workday. Three huge cloud computing companies. All of them are worth quite a bit more than CrowdStrike right now. Salesforce is over a $200 billion market cap, and CrowdStrike is like, what, $40 billion? Well, it has a way to go, but it's already caught up quite a bit to Workday. CrowdStrike is growing in market cap, and I think that will continue to where it gets well over $100 billion. So... Again, he has very ambitious goals. That's where this company has been positioned. And this video came out like two or three years ago. So we can continue on with it. Finding what we call the security cloud. Like these other cloud leaders, CrowdStrike started with a clean slate to build not only a scalable cloud architecture, but also a scalable, frictionless, and highly efficient business model. Our software solutions are entirely software as a service. We offer no on-premise versions of our platform whatsoever. We are subscription only with no perpetual licenses, giving us a strong, scalable, recurring revenue base and a deep technology and business model advantage. They are 100% focused on reoccurring revenue. That is subscription revenue, annual reoccurring revenue. You see that referenced all throughout their financial statements and their, you know, their presentations. That is a big focus of them because he agrees with me. He thinks it's a superior form of revenue and I feel the same way with other companies like Netflix or Disney Plus or Spotify. When you have annual recurring revenue, it's just something you can depend on. So I like that CrowdStrike focuses on that. The real challenge in cybersecurity is preventing breaches on the endpoints. Reaching the endpoint is the goal of almost all cyber attacks because that's where the sensitive data actually sits. We define endpoints as computers, servers, mobile and IoT devices, and even virtual workloads. The network perimeter is disappearing. More and more companies deploy workloads in the cloud and hybrid environments, and they have large teams of remote employees all using their endpoints outside the corporate network. So I'm not too familiar with cybersecurity. This isn't my strong point. Uh, but I understand what he's saying here. Basically, when you work at a company and you're working on premise, they can do certain things to secure that premise. But now that we have work from home and people are have all these mobile devices and iPads and laptops and they're all working all over the place, you know, they're traveling. A lot of work from home is it's going to stay even after coronavirus is done. And that doesn't really work with on-premise trust because you have all these devices out there and they all need to be secured as well. And the cloud allows you to do that, but on-premise security doesn't. The new security model is becoming one of zero trust where no user or device is trusted by default, even those already inside the network perimeter. That means you have to protect every endpoint and workload individually, wherever it is. And the only effective way to do that is from the cloud. Our cloud native solution gives us a clear competitive advantage over existing on-premise architectures. Historically, these products have been siloed and manually integrated into other solutions. They can't collect and analyze data at scale or leverage the network effect of crowdsourcing. And they place a huge burden on customers who have to install, tune, manage, and maintain these hardware-intensive systems. 
These systems typically rely on single purpose agents that present a significant burden to the endpoints, severely affecting user productivity. Because they process data locally instead of in the cloud, they tend to be large and cumbersome and consume huge amounts of memory and processing power. Since each agent only addresses a single purpose, customers are required to deploy more and more agents in their environment. Worst of all, these legacy solutions are largely ineffective. Typically, they only have visibility into previously identified attacks via a database of signatures, which must be consistently maintained and updated. So an attack can only be stopped if the method is already known and cataloged, and if the customer's locally stored signature list is up to date, and all of their endpoints have been recently scanned. Custom this is one of the issues with CrowdStrike, is that the product is not super simple to understand. So if you invest in something like Netflix, people easily know what Netflix is. They don't have to be educated on it or Spotify. They know that you get unlimited music. Those are easy to understand companies. CrowdStrike has an issue where its product is complicated. Cybersecurity, cloud security is very complicated. He's trying to educate us on why cloud security architecture is superior to the traditional way of doing things, right? The on-premise way. But we're sitting here and we're having to learn this and it's complicated. They're trying to lay it out as simply as possible. As a result, companies suffer devastating breaches despite their investment in security solutions that kill productivity. So he spends the first six, seven minutes just outlining the issue. That's what he's trying to do is outline the issue here, what the problem is, that these antiquated ways of doing security won't work. And I agree with it. You look at the situation now and there's companies like SolarWinds that are getting hacked that are supposed to be security expert companies, but they're not CrowdStrike. And CrowdStrike was one of the ones that was targeted in this latest breach. They tried to hack CrowdStrike and they were not successful. So I think this company does have something figured out. It was the go-to company to look into the situation and to find out a solution for it. They actually went to CrowdStrike and said, we need your help investigating. So I do think that they've become kind of the standard in cloud security. And he's gonna outline how they got there. To solve these problems, we built a 100% cloud native endpoint security platform. Our solution is rapidly deployable, easy to use, and unlocks the power of crowdsourced data. It gets smarter the more data it consumes, increasing our intelligence, effectiveness, and competitive advantage with each new customer and endpoint joining our crowdsource network. We do all of this with one lightweight agent that is intelligent by design, frictionless to deploy, and non-invasive to the end user. Our lightweight agent is designed to be automatically installed and operational on an endpoint in less than 30 seconds, and that's without any reboots. This is a big deal. Customers don't want to reboot their entire business to adopt a new solution. Solving this engineering challenge was critical for providing immediate time to value for our customers. We had a customer deploy our solution to over 100,000 endpoints in a day without a single call to CrowdStrike support. I'm rolling. Now it starts getting into the testimonials of all the different big players using CrowdStrike. Lots of Fortune 500 companies like ADP. Having ADP trust you with their security, I think is a huge vote of confidence. Think about what ADP secures. They secure the whole nation's uh, payroll, the whole nation's paycheck, and they chose CrowdStrike. So of course they're gonna feature that as their first testimonial because if ADP is choosing them for security, that pretty much shows that the company that values security the most, which is ADP, they cannot be hacked. They cannot afford to have a breach. ADP would be the last company and they chose CrowdStrike. So. That right there, I think, is a, a pretty good testimonial, but we won't go through all of these. I want to get into where this company's going in the future because CrowdStrike has grown pretty significantly over the past year. It's grown into a $46 billion company. So it's no longer one of these $10, $12 billion companies. It's gone up four times. It's at $46 billion market cap. When I first started my position in CrowdStrike, it was at a, a quite a bit less market cap, I think like $35 billion. So it's grown over $10 billion since that time. But again, I'm looking towards the future, and I think down the road in a couple of years, I really think this company will double. I think that the market cap will double. I think that the company's number of clients, number of revenue will double over and over again over the next two or three years. So CrowdStrike is one that I remain very bullish on. Also, something I could mention is it is one of the companies that uh, Kathy Woods has in ARK Invest. So she considers it one of the companies worthy of investment in the ARK W ETF, that's the one focused on disruptive internet companies. But this one in particular, I think is one of her strongest bets. 
So we can look at that as well. Kathy Woods has it in her fund. Uh, I have it in the story fund. And I think that qualitatively, the qualities of this business, I think are really strong. It's going to grow over time. It has a lot of tailwinds. It would have to take something very drastic to derail CrowdStrike. There'd have to be some competitor that really comes out with a better product, like some big, I don't know, something big. Maybe Amazon announcing they're going into cloud security with some big push into it. I think it would have to be something very big to cause a risk to the story of CrowdStrike. So let's go ahead and move on to a more updated presentation from them. That video was like two or three years old. I think it was like 2016. This is from their annual overview in December 2020. So let's go ahead and look at this. I'll try to outline some things here. So they say our mission is simple. We stop breaches. That is their mission. It was three years ago. It's still their mission to stop breaches. And breaches keep happening, which is bad for most businesses, but that's good for CrowdStrike because every time that there's all these security things happening, it pushes up their stock more. And again, they still have the same goal. They align themselves with uh, Salesforce, ServiceNow, and Workday, but now they're growing almost as big as Workday. In fact, if we check on the market cap of Workday, Workday has a market cap of 52 billion. So CrowdStrike is already at 46 billion. In my opinion, CrowdStrike will pass up Workday market cap. Between the two and the factors surrounding these stocks, I think that CrowdStrike will take the lead over the next couple of years. It'll take a while to, to come up to Salesforce. I think that Salesforce is going to remain a pretty big company. It's 200 billion plus. I think it's like 220, 30 billion, but I haven't checked that one in a bit. And then ServiceNow is somewhere in between. So CrowdStrike is growing, I think, out of all of these, the fastest by far. I think the company will continue to grow faster than Salesforce, ServiceNow, or Workday. And that's why it's my biggest position. Moving on, we have CrowdStrike at a glance. This is at a glance, their financial profile. He said years ago that their main focus was focusing on recurring revenue, right? Subscription revenue. ARR is their reoccurring revenue, and they have 81% year-over-year growth. That's pretty great growth. Subscription revenue year-over-year growth is 87%. That is very strong growth. And then they say that 61% of their clients have four-plus modules, meaning that they're able to, to cross-sell their product. They're able to offer their same clients more and more products. So not only are they increasing the number of clients they have, but they're increasing the amount that they're gaining, the lifetime value of a client. They say the problem, other security products are expensive, complex, and ineffective, on-premise inflexibility, agent bloat, signatures miss new attacks. So it's the same stuff that we've seen outlined. Uh, the on-premise security is inferior to cloud security. Our technology, our cloud native platform elements powered by cloud scaled AI, you know the benefits mostly of cloud. And it says smart filtering agent and high fidelity data. Uh, a lot of this I don't understand, the baseline anomaly and the threat. So they can start filtering out things that look like they could potentially be a threat. They can see anomalies and then they can identify threats. Proprietary distributed threat graph. I don't know what this is, but this is something they developed. A time-based analysis. They have an entire threat graph. This is part of their Falcon platform. They say the Falcon platform defining the security cloud. And this goes into detail of all these different parts of this platform. And they have it on their website too. You can check on CrowdStrike.com. But they have like the cloud security. They have security and IT operations, uh, managed services, and they have different modules with, within each of these. Endpoint security, identity protection, threat intel, and CS store. So uh, they have a lot of different things that you're looking at here with cloud security. This is all on their Falcon platform, which is now their main security platform. And then moving on, we have cloud scale AI. This is one of those virtuous circles where CrowdStrike because it's such a big player in the, crowd, the cloud security industry, it already has so much data that it can sift through and do artificial intelligence and analysis on that it, it creates a better lead for them, which makes it so that they have a better product, which makes it so that they have more customers because they have the best product, which those more customers add to their lead. This is the same type of thing I see with Spotify. Spotify gives really good uh, music recommendations. Their daily playlists they make are better than most other music services. And they get that because they have so many customers and so much data, which make it so that they have better recommendations, which make it so that they get more customers. You see the same thing with a company like CrowdStrike. They're benefiting from the same circle that goes around with artificial intelligence. If they can use the data they already have to identify different threats, then that gives them a lead against other competitors. Why cloud native is better? Better data access, better data analysis, 
data reuse. They have constant protection, continuous learning, once collected, reuse many times. They don't have to convince me too much on cloud being better than native. It's overall better in almost every way. You look at companies like, again, like Spotify, like Netflix, even Adobe. When Adobe made the switch from being an on-premise sales suite, you had to spend $1,000, you got it once, you didn't get many updates, it could be pirated really easily, and then they switched their business model over to cloud. The cloud business model has treated Adobe very well. So starting off recognizing this is something that CrowdStrike already has. They already recognize the benefits of it strongly. The CEO talks about it all the time, the reasons that they're focused on the cloud, both in the architecture of their system and the economics is a better version as well. Our customers, this is where we get on to how fast CrowdStrike is growing. This is just subscription customers. So again, great economic model. I think every subscription customer is probably worth a lot more than a one-time sale at different companies. They started off in 2017 with 450. And then it goes in 2018 to 1,242. What, they tripled the amount of customers in one year. And then it was in 2019, 2,516. And then they doubled it again to 5,431 in 2020. The customer growth is crazy. And this is not revenue growth. So looking at revenue growth, companies can do certain things like they could just squeeze out more money per customer. They could just up the price and the company really doesn't have the choice to leave right then, but they might plan to in the future. So it's not the best revenue growth that they're just charging more and more and more and making their customers upset and they're eventually gonna leave the company. This is gaining new customers. They're gaining thousands of new customers every single year, a growth rate of 85% year over year. In 2021, they now have 8,416 customers and they grew that from 450 in 2017. Incredible amount of growth. As of January 31st, 2020, 49 of them are Fortune 100s. So they have almost half of the Fortune 100 companies, 11 of the top 20 banks, so they're trusted by financial institutions, and 40 of the top global 100 companies. So they're trusted by the most important companies in the world. I think that this company will be trusted by anyone. And then we have their low friction go to market. This is where they get into their marketing strategies, how they're gaining more customers, how they're gaining all this customer growth. And I actually outline this as a negative for CrowdStrike, not in particular for CrowdStrike, but for the whole business to business type of companies, right? Those type of companies, they need to do a lot of marketing to grow their customer base. And that's not something you see with companies that are like Netflix or Spotify or uh, you know Facebook with social networks. Those grow organically. A lot of people sign up for those because they just care about them. HBO Max doesn't really have to reach every single customer with an advertisement in order for them to sign up with HBO Max. Now, CrowdStrike is actually getting out of that sphere of where they're becoming, uh, you know, they're not this unknown company. Now when people think of security, they're starting to think of CrowdStrike. So I expect the amount of marketing they're gonna have to do in the future just because of how big they are, how known they're getting in the industry, that will be reduced over time. They'll have the effect of being kind of the go-to. They'll be the DocuSign of signing documents. They'll be the, uh, you know, the, the sales force of CRMs. I think that if CrowdStrike gets to this point where they become so globally recognized that they won't have to do as much marketing in general. But they do have their marketing techniques and they consider them very effective. They have field sales, inside sales, you know, they have global coverage, supercharged with low friction selling. So they allow you to do in-app trials. They look at the CrowdStrike store and see the different things, trial to play. So they have lots of free trials. They really try to get people into their system so that they can see the benefits of it. They go on to outline customer testimonials, lots of big important companies that are securing extremely important information. They have our growth strategy. This is where we get into some of the numbers of their revenue growth. Large and expanding total addressable market which I totally agree with. The amount of companies that are going to take cybersecurity more seriously over the next year, I think will continually be growing. It'll be growing for the next 10 years. IT and operation management, threat intelligence services, identity protection. This isn't just an antivirus. CrowdStrike is not a big antivirus company. They do everything with cybersecurity, which is a, a lot of things. There could be separate companies made for each of these, but CrowdStrike offers their, their product that covers all of these with different modules. But they believe that the two-year compound growth rate of the addressable market will be 9%. So they think it's going to grow 9% year over year. Um, but they outline that even at the market right now, they haven't saturated it nearly enough. They have financial overview. 
Rapid growth of annual recurring revenue. Again, it's all focused on the subscription revenue. That's something that I like to see with this company. They're averaging 81% annual revenue growth year over year. 81%. And this doesn't really seem to be slowing down at all. That's something that I'm looking for is how quickly this will decelerate. We know that as companies are very small, it's easier to double revenue that's a smaller number, but CrowdStrike continues to double it, or at least get close to doubling it, even as they're growing bigger and bigger. I think the opportunity to scale here will continue into the future. In fact, if we go to the screen here, I can look at their total revenue. This is year over year, and that's good. We see year over year, but if I switch this to quarterly, we can even take a look at quarterly revenue. Their quarterly revenue is just as impressive. They're growing it every single quarter 85% over the past year. Every single quarter over quarter. That is the result of having this type of subscription revenue. Strong revenue growth. The annual revenue, 99% subscription, year-over-year revenue growth. That's crazy fast. The 2021 year-to-date revenue growth of 88%. Again, very fast. So they're growing the majority of the revenue subscription, and they're growing that very quickly. Strong customer retention and expansion. This is where they're outlining. This graph is kind of confusing looking at it. I had to look at it for a bit to figure it out, but they're basically outlining that they're beating the benchmark. They're underneath it for a bit with customer retention, but now they've gone above it and their gross retention is over 90%. So they're making more and more money per customer and they're even keeping the majority of their customers. The power of the platform. Percentage of subscription customers with multiple cloud module subscriptions, four or more, this has gone up 61%. So they are good at cross sales. This is what you look for in these cloud computing companies. When Salesforce signs up with a company, their original package is not what that company is going to end up with in a couple of years. They're going to have more Salesforce add-ons and attachments and features. And Salesforce will get more and more out of that customer as time goes on. And it will be more difficult to move away from them. I think that's the same thing that CrowdStrike is doing. They get in with a customer. It's easy to set up. People like the product, they, you know, they get used to it or whatever. And then down the road, they sell more and more modules, right? More and more things to the customer. And then you have them improving gross margins. You have them improving their operating leverage. You have these long-term targets that they're moving towards that they'll eventually get to. And then you have the appendix. So let's go ahead and move on to one other piece of research that I found when I was looking into this company. I wanted to see with a company growing as fast as CrowdStrike is, if you're working at a tech company, it has this much opportunity. It's founder led. It's a very enthusiastic place to be. You know, they're gaining thousands of customers a year. Imagine working for a company that's gaining that many customers, doubling the amount of customers every single year. I wanted to see what the work life was. What are the employees like there? How do they like working for the company? So I looked it up on Glassdoor, which is a website where you can see reviews that the employees leave. And it gives you some information here. Um, they have the, the overall rating. Most people, 96% approve of the CEO, which is really good to see from the employees, not just investors wanting the CEO to like squeeze profits and stuff, but that the CEO is treating his employees right. 69% said they would recommend to a friend. That's pretty good. Glassdoor is a place where a lot of like disgruntled employees for any reason, they might have a manager that made them upset or something. They'll go leave a negative review. So overall, the reviews are 40 um, out of, you know, four out of five stars. And I think that that's pretty decent for a company that's growing as fast as CrowdStrike. That probably has a lot of issues right now because of how fast it's growing. I think that's pretty good overall. But if we look at this, look at the pros, they have good work life balance, great product. That's something I want to highlight there. A great product, even the employees believe that a lot of tech companies where the product might seem good, a lot of employees will say they hate the product that they're creating, right? They know the ins and outs of it. They know that it's not coded well or something. And so seeing that it's a great product, even from the employees, I think is a good thing. And then look at the cons. The cons I think are a good thing for investors because the company grows at an amazing pace. Imagine that. This is found in 16 reviews. The employees themselves are saying the company grows at an amazing place and there are some growing pains. The employees are outlining that it's growing too fast. Our company's growing too fast and we're having growing pains, meaning that we're trying to hire people and train people faster than the company can keep up with. These are the type of companies you want to invest in. Ones that are growing so fast, they have growing pains, but the product is great. The company's growing and they, you know, they can't keep track of all of this. So that is the pros and cons that I found. And I thought that was very revealing with it. One other image we can look at here is one I took from the CrowdStrike page and it outlined a little notification here. 
we have a hiring surge going on. CrowdStrike is hiring. So if you're in this business or you want a job, check it out. They have 601 job listings currently. 601 for a company of this size. That is incredible. And you could go through them. They were paying employees $100,000, $200,000. They're hiring in every single role and they're trying to get the best employees possible. And the amount of salaries that they're giving them, I think, I think will accomplish that. It'll lure people there because one of the things that they said on Glassdoor as well is the the benefits and the salaries, they gave really good reviews. So the fact that they're having a, a hiring surge, they have 600 jobs right now available. They're trying to grow as fast as possible, I, I think is a good sign for this company. So just qualitatively looking at this company, I think it's in cybersecurity. That's clearly going to grow over time. There's going to be more of a need for it. They're becoming one of these bigger companies that's globally recognized as the go-to cybersecurity, cloud security company. They have a CEO that's founder-led that I think is doing a really good job. He's been very focused. You can see his presentations three years ago, and he was saying the same things he's saying now. They have employees that love the product, that say that they're having growing pains because it's growing too fast. They have a hiring surge on Glassdoor. You can look at all the employee reviews, and overall, it's very good reviews. I just think that overall, this company has a lot going for it. Qualitatively, with the numbers, with the story of it, I think it's a fantastic story. It's It has all these characteristics I like, the subscription revenue, the founder-led, the tailwinds with the industry that they're in, the effectiveness of their marketing, becoming a well-known brand name, uh, the, the fact that people are working from home with all these devices, it fits along in so many different ways with different stories that I have a hard time seeing a lot of downside with CrowdStrike. I think this is a company that has significant upside. It does have downside, every holding does. There could be something I'm not aware of that could cause this stock to go down. But I think that the pros and the story behind it and the upside far outweigh the downside. It currently has a market cap of $46 billion. My opinion, I don't think it will be long before it's a $100 billion company. And that's why I have it as the top position right now in the story fund. We'll see how this does over time. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little look at CrowdStrike. If you want to see more videos like this, where I dive into different companies like CrowdStrike, I'm going to be doing them on Salesforce and Spotify and Peloton and different companies that I'm invested in. So I'm going to mostly focus on ones that I'm bought into as well. And I'm going to be explaining why I'm buying them, why I hold these companies. If you're interested in that type of content, make sure you're subscribed to the After Hours channel. You can also check out the main show if you're not a subscriber there but I assume that most of you are. But I'm gonna come out with more videos like these in the future. If you wanna see every buy and sell I do, you can check out the Patreon. But other than that, I'll see you guys next time.